Hi YouTube, um, so welcome back to another video. I wanted to talk today about some books that I'm really excited to read in 2024 at some point. So these aren't like all of the books I'm excited to read because there's so many, but these are a combination of one, the books I had on my bookshelf already, so I have bought already. Um, and also some of the ones that I think will, I want to read in the next couple of months, um, so quite high up on my TBR as it were. So I don't set myself really a TBR in terms of this is what I want to read this month, this is what I want to read next month, unless I have some kind of proofs from companies that have release dates and I want to obviously get them um, get the review up before the release date comes out. But um, I've got some books here that I want to talk to you about that I think um, I am, well I know I am so excited to be reading in 2024. So the first book I'm really excited to be reading in 2024 is The Housemaid's Secret. Now The Housemaid, which I have somewhere on my bookshelf um, here, I was really, really impressed by it. The twist in it genuinely shocked me. Now I'm quite hard to shock when it comes to a twist because thrillers don't blow my mind a lot of the time. I'm just reading them and I'm thinking, oh, this person's lost. Oh my God, it was their mum, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, they don't blow my mind. But the twist in that, it was so well written by Frieda McFadden that um, essentially nobody I think could guess it unless somebody had kind of given hints to us what was happening. Or if you said somebody, you think it's one thing and then it's the other thing, things might change. But apparently The Housemaid's Secret manages to carry on the story of The Housemaid from the first book um, and still manage to get in there another amazing twist. And I think what's happening is people are starting to possibly think Freedom and Fadden might be one of the best kind of thriller writers for twists um, out there. Um, so this I'm really excited to read. I was buoyed even more the other day when I saw somebody on social media say they'd finished it, who, whose reviews I genuinely um, trust. I think she's called All the Genres on um, Instagram. Um, I think she said that this was going to be fa this was fantastic. She finished it, which which buoyed me into thinking, yeah, this definitely is going to be an absolute banger. So that's going to be the first book on this list. The next book I am excited to be reading this year is I'm going to be starting the Slow Horses series by Mick Herron. Now, if you've seen anything about Mick Herron, you know, I think he's been around for quite a while. This definitely wasn't published recently. Um, I'm not sure when these were first published. Um, let's see if I can find out. It's first published in 2010. So he's been writing these now for 14 years. He's recently or more recently than this came out anyway, has been on Amazon, Apple TV and they've done a series called Slow Horses based on this series. My dad's a big fan of this series. He says it's fantastic. He says they're um, really well written. They're really interesting. They've got some good twists. They've got some good high action moments, that sort of stuff. So that's really what I'm excited to get into. And he's one of those authors that no matter how many like um, kind of people you speak to about crime, he's always a name that picks, um, jumps out. And as I was trying to say kind of at the start, but then went off on a word tangent, He's, I think, starting to get a bit of acclaim and a bit more popular as a result of both the Apple TV series. But also, I think people are kind of doing that thing where they watch the TV series, go off and read the books and think the books are even better than the TV series I enjoyed. So that's good to see. I'm excited for this this year. Um, so that's Mick Heron by Slow Horses. That's not Mick Heron by Slow Horses. That's Slow Horses by Mick Heron. <laughs> Their next book is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, or Lattes, if you are pretentious. Um, but essentially, this is called a cosy fantasy, which is a genre I'm not sure I've read any of before. But essentially, it's about an orc who goes to set up a coffee company after having lots of adventures. And then I think what kind of happens is either people come in and talk to her about their adventures, or she talks to them about her adventures. I don't know. But essentially, everybody's been raving about it. I was a bit nervous, and I think I've talked about this in a um, previous video, either in, on here or on my TikTok, about how I was nervous to read it because the front cover I did not enjoy before, and I know you shouldn't judge a book by its front cover, but I did, and I wasn't a fan. I'm a much more of a fan of this one, and the sequel, which you can see here, has also followed this theme, so that's good. Really excited for this. I think everybody's come out of it has been like, that surprised me how much I enjoyed that. It made them feel wholesome. Um, it was something quite unique in that you don't often get kind of wholesome character based books in fantasy. Um, I'm not sure how fantasy it's going to be. It might just be like a regular story, but people are orcs and elves and gnomes and gnomes. Um, all those sort of things. I don't think you get gnomes in fantasy. I think they're just the chaps that sit out the front of your door. But there we go. Um, so I'm really excited to that. So that's kind of the, that's the third book on this list. Oh my god.
The next book on my list is The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. Now, if you know anything about fantasy, you've heard of N.K. Jemison. Um, this borders on fantasy sci-fi slash hypothetical science, I guess, I don't know. Essentially, I th what I think this is about is there are alternative versions of New York. <laughs> um, and essentially, it's, so the, the blurb reads, Every great city has a soul. Some are ancient as myths. Others are as new and destructive as children. New York, she's got six. And all six will be called to arms in the greatest battle the city has ever fought. Dazzling with imagination, brimming with passion and crackling with wit, the city we became is a modern masterpiece of culture, identity, magic and myth in contemporary New York City. So really, really interested to hear about this. Now, I have read another of N.K. Jemison's books. Um, I've forgotten the name of it, but if I think you probably know which one I'm talking about if you've read N.K. Jemison or heard of her before. Um, I've read that one. Um, a long time ago though, so I feel like I need to do a reread of that and then finish that series. But um, she's apparently a fantastic, or she is a fantastic author. I remember the book being very clever. This is another series that I, I don't know if it's finished, but I know there's at least two, this and another. There may be a third, I'm not sure. But it's one of those books that um, whenever I look it up, whenever I kind of see any videos about it on YouTube or on TikTok, people are raving about it. And I think N.K. Jemisin is one of those authors now that is becoming everything that she writes is an absolute banger um which is really really exciting because i love one of those authors that you know you can trust every time a new book comes out by them that there's going to be an absolute um banger as i said so that's the city we became by nk jemison that's definitely going to be high up on my list this year um, i'm really in the mood for something it's not too long um the text isn't too small um it's not too thick it's thicker than i keep thinking it is um oh there's a little bit at the end there that i probably should not have seen I'm trying not to read the last page, but also get, so about 430 pages <laughs> um, long, which is a good amount. It's not too long fantasy and it's not too short where you think nothing's going to happen. That's it. The City We Became by A.K. Jemison. Really, really excited for that. So the next two books on my list are both fantasy books. Now, I always say to people that fantasy is my favourite genre and then they're like, what's your favourite fantasy? You must have read loads. You must have some really fun, unique, um, uh, like, recommendations. And essentially, I don't. Essentially... I've read some of the popular ones, I've read the first book in a lot of popular ones, and then that's it. I don't have a vast reading of fantasy. The, time, the reason is, I read, what, 50, 60 books a year? Um, probably 10, maybe 15 of those are fantasy, and the rest cover the rest of the genres. You've got historical fiction, thriller, contemporary fiction, um, sometimes a bit of romance, but I don't tend to like those. Um, and you've got all the other genres that I try and read as well, because when, if you're trying to read the best books, they're not going to all be fancy, and a lot of the time they're not going to be fancy, because there's such a vast breadth of other kind of um, narrative you can give in books. But A King's Radiance, anyway, is a independently fancy, uh, published fancy novel by L.R. Schultz, I think his name is Luke, um, and I'll just read out a little bit of blurb here to kind of give you an idea. So it says, three siblings, a rebel, a prince, and a prisoner. The sun's light shines bright over the land of Zippor, and only a select few can harness its power, but all power comes with a cost, and the world is not kind to those who refuse to pay it. So it tells the story of three different people, essentially someone called Ray's Glaive, Dazen Glaive, and what looks to be Isha, there may be more people in this, um, but I've seen a lot of positive things about this. The front cover is beautiful. I follow the author on Instagram and he seems sound, so um, that helps with it. Um, and as I said, it's another independent fantasy. Now, if there's anything that I can imagine is harder than writing a fantasy book you're really like passionate about and then trying to get that published and trying to make that popular, I don't think there's much more harder in um, literature than that. There may be, I, I don't know, memoirs, nonfiction, or maybe some other very small niches. But fantasy in general is one of those um, genres I think is well known to be more difficult to kind of get published just because... I don't even know if it's because there's a smaller audience, but just because you're asking a lot more of people's imaginations to jump into a whole new world. If you just said to somebody, this is a book about World War Two and it's about some children like coming of age during World War Two, that's a lot more easier sell than saying, OK, here's 600 pages of a brand new book with a load of new characters you're going to have to learn, a whole new world you're going to have to kind of understand, cultures, religions, history, all that sort of stuff. It's a difficult sell. So I love to read independently for published fantasy books. I love to explore them. I love to promote the authors. Because even if I don't enjoy it, you may find a massive audience somewhere else that does enjoy it. 
Um, so that's A King's Radiance by L.R. Schultz that I'm looking forward to reading this year. So that's my first fantasy, I think. Well, N.K. Jemison was kind of fancy, actually. And Legends of Latte and Latte. So there's a lot of fantasy, actually, that I'm quite excited to read this year. But the next one is... The Shadow Casket by Chris Wooding. Now, luckily I went to the gym this morning because this is bloody heavy. Look at that. It's also a paperback. That is big. If I drop this right now, I would cave through my floor. Um, the Shadow Casket is the sequel to The Ember Blade, which I um, put I put down there. That's not what I really meant to say. I have down there. It's a story of a group of people who went to go find a magic item. Along the way, they grew friendships. Along the way, wars happened, that sort of thing. Um, and this is the sequel to that. Now, I was sent this kindly by the publisher themselves, who are Glanks. The Ember Blade, I thought, was one of the best fantasy books I'd read possibly ever. It genuinely was that fantastic. It had grand scope. It had a story that genuinely felt like it was going somewhere. Sometimes with fantasy, you feel like they're just filling pages. Um, it had characters that I was really interested in, not just kind of a heroine or a hero. I don't know. The main hero was genuinely interesting, but some side characters who went from being people you disliked or were meant to dislike and to people you couldn't help love. There was funny characters, there was the dumb oaf character, um, and there was a, there's a building world. The world, I think, was probably the weakest part in the first story, but sometimes that's, that doesn't matter if you've got enough kind of fancy elements within the rest of the characters and the history and that sort of stuff. The Shadow Casket is the second. I think there's a third coming out possibly this year, so I'm really, really excited to get into this. As I said, it's a thick boy, so I'm going to have to audio support this one. This is going to be one of those ones where I sit down and I read it um, or listen to the audiobook at three times speed whilst reading it, and I'm listening to it in the car whilst hoovering, all sorts of different stuff. But um, The Shadow Casket by Chris Warding is the final book on this list that I'm really excited to read. Now, there's loads of books. Um, down here, I'm just going to move my camera one second. You can see down here is a list, I don't know how to gesture, uh, um, a pile of books that I need to be reading over the next few months. Now, some of these are proof requests from publishers. Others are just books that I picked up from a charity shop or um, a bookshop or I got excited about and was like, oh my God, I need that. So this is the list of books I need to get through. There's not a chance I'm gonna finish all of those. I'm slowly running out of space. I probably need another bookshelf. Does anybody want to come and read and review books for me for free? Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, that's my TBR. I'm going to finish the video like this now, um, down in a squat. If you have liked this video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Do all the things they do on YouTube. Also, do leave some comments. I would really love to hear some comments. Um, let me know if any of the books you've read. Let me know if you recommend any other books, etc. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.